Fenton and I'm an aeromodeler and an engineer. Join me on a fascinating journey where I show you some of the techniques used in scale aeromodeling. Well hello again aeromodelers. I wasn't sure I was going to do this but I'm going to have a go anyway. It may all end up on the editing and cutting room floor but I'm in my garage, my outside workshop as it were. Um, the weather's marginally better. Uh, we're sitting at about 18, 19 degrees outside, so we're good. It's dry, it's not humid. So we're going to put a, a coat of primer down. First of all, on the wings, which you can see behind me on the bench. Uh, and if that goes okay, then I'll go and get the fuselage and I'll put a coat on that as well. Although once you've seen one bit, you've seen it all. To go over a little bit what I'm going to be using, I've got behind the bench there and on the floor an 8 CFM compressor, 2.5 horsepower, which fills the tank to around 140 psi. I have a regulator and a water trap, which then drops that down to 25 psi, which I then use for, for the airbrush. Talking about that side of things, lots of people say, well, how on earth can you use a big compressor like that for little old airbrush work? Um, well, this is your normal um, fitting that you would get on a, an airline, and it's a it's a quarter mil, uh, quarter inch fitting. And normally, I'd be using a gun like this. This is a panel panel gun, so uh, it's actually a full size nozzle in the end of it, um, but it's for spraying wheel archers and things like that on cars and I bought it to spray <laughs> a car at the other end of the garage there is a sports car hiding under there and this was used to do some of the smaller areas and the underbody areas and inside of the uh, cockpit area so basically that's your normal fitting to a normal quarter inch jobby but what I've got what I've made up this is your normal airline that you see with an airbrush and it's a 10 foot one and it's got a little clip on it for attaching straight to the airbrush uh, and it's a quick release you can get them uh, and I fit it to the bottom of my Iwata airbrush and then that's how I quick release it. The other end if you can get fittings and this is this is a quarter inch that matches this so that in that and then I've got all the power and capacity the big tank at 35 psi for this and quite often if I'm airbrushing a smallish model the compressor never cuts in it's uh, it's that bigger tank and uh, and that good and it gives you a beautifully smooth uh, flow of air there's no pulsing and it doesn't drop over minutes so it's it's a really really good solution so the other things I've got down here is hundreds of these um, which are just uh, latex gloves in fact these are rubber gloves so you've seen the panel gun that I would normally use well I'm not going to be using that this time I'm going to try something new um, I used I got this gun uh, a while ago and it's a nice little gun and I think it's got a point, point 0.5 or point 0.4 nozzle in it which is should be perfect for a uh, primer I tried it but the last time I tried it I had over thinned it and what happened is the paint actually started to soften the cellulose dope and bits started to lift so um, that was not a very clever move so what I'm going to do today is I'm mixing the primer 50-50 and I've sprayed it already at 50-50 on other bits and pieces and it's been fine so this is going to be my gun of choice um, that little adapter that I showed you if you unscrew the end of it so that you've just got the fitting that you would normally get on an airbrush hose I've got a fitting in the end of the small gun and this will just thread straight onto the end of that so I can use this little gun on my nice flexible rubber airbrush line which is perfect okay so if during the filming suddenly there's an almighty racket kicks off that's the compressor deciding that the air pressure has dropped low enough for it to cut in so I've got a gallon of celly thinners stirring sticks, multiple of, paper stirring cups, not that I should need much. This is the primer I'm using, it's a Upol P88 uh, high build primer filler and that's what I'm going to be using. 
and then there's a, a jar here already of pre-mixed 50-50 and that's what I'll be starting with. Okay so what I'm going to do is just set the camera up on the far corner shining down onto the work so you can see what's going on. Uh, it's probably going to be too noisy and too cloudy and anything to see much but uh, hey ho we'll give it a go eh? All right. Okay, I've turned the fan up to full speed. All that's doing is drawing the air out through the filter and then back into the room again so it doesn't do very much but it does hopefully keep dust down a little bit. I've not shown it but I do actually have a mask on as well. Oh well. In for a penny, in for a pound, so they said. See if we can get the settings right. Perfect. So what I'm going to do is a light dusting first and then we'll see how it looks. Not much to see really. This is just at 25 psi with the U-pole at 50-50 thinness. You can see it's going on really nicely. Could go on thicker but I'm not ending up with a lot of dust in the air which is what you want. You don't want to be wasting the paint by throwing it around the room. You can see I've forgotten about the light dusting. And straight into the getting it on there. What you try to do is keep the brush moving or the gun moving at all times. Okay? So when it stops at the end of a row, you release the air pressure. And then as you start moving again, you pull the trigger. And there's an area where the rib tapes have actually lifted. And there's a few areas where this has happened. I was quite concerned about this. The Solatec rib tapes don't seem to want to stick very well to the Seconite. That's used nearly a full tank on the spray gun. Uh, and I filled it to about three quarters. So it's probably used, well, just over half. I suppose. And that's done one side of one wing panel. So I'm clearly going to have to mix up quite a bit more to, um, to get the job done. But that one coat will be fine. There are areas where the, the edges of the tapes have lifted uh, and I will iron, iron them back down again once it's all nice and dry. Um, and that should sort them out I hope. Well as you can see that wasn't really very exciting and there wasn't very much to see but you got the idea that uh, Whilst the gun was moving, I had air pressure and I, I carried on even after the end of the panel and then let go of the air as the gun was still moving. So it's important to do that because if you stop at the end with the gun still firing, you'll, you'll get a, a pool of paint at that end. Primary doesn't really matter too much. Most of this is going to get sanded up anyway. But it's good practice to, to do this because this is what you'll need to do on a top coat. And some of the very thin top coats will run in the blink of an eye. So you've got, to get, you've got to get used to the technique, okay? and it's, it's, it's not difficult, it just needs a little bit of practice. The paint I'm going to use on this is Class Coat Silver, which is a wonderful paint, really nice. One part catalyst, one part epoxy paint, and one part to, to thinner. Uh, and that gives a lovely consistency that will spray in most, most guns, quite low pressure as well, which is really good. Now, one of the things you didn't see in that video, which I can assure you I was wearing, but was... Um, was a mask. Now this is a, a Sundstrom and quite an expensive Sundstrom 
I hate to add. And um, now you can't hear me speak, but that's what I'm using. So it is worth protecting yourself by getting good gear. The Sundstrom is not cheap, but uh, <laughs> you've only got one set of lungs. So, um, so that was my belief. So we're going to let the, um, I've only done the one side of the, the wing panel so far. And that took, um, that took half of that jar. So of course, typically, when you don't want it to do the uh, do it, the compressor kicks in and uh, exits out of the racket. So um, where were we? That um, that little jar was probably about a hundred hundred and fifty milliliters of primer that went onto the upper surfaces of the wings. So I've mixed up a great big pot of primer. Um, this should be enough to do the other side of the wings and the fuselage. So you've seen the mask. Uh, what you may not have seen is my doohickey over here, which I'll just move the camera. The item over here, it's just a fan uh, and all it's doing is moving air around. But what I've covered the front in is the foam filter that you get for spray booths. And they usually have lots of panels of this. And I just put a piece over that and the air gets drawn through and then blown straight out the other side. So it's not actually extracting it so per se, but it is actually, as you can see, trapping a lot of the overspray, which there isn't very much because I'm at, uh, only at spraying at 25 psi, but it's still capturing it all, which is, which is really useful. Okay, and I apologise for the attire. This horrible, nasty uh, dust coat does at least keep my clothes fairly clean. Once the wings and uh, the whole airframe has been covered in primer and it's been left to dry for a few hours, the primer gives you a good base layer, a canvas on which you can see what's going on with the surface. And you can see here, <clears throat> there's an area where the tape has lifted. Now what I normally do when I put tapes on is I put a layer of dope on top and I haven't in this case. And I think that's the reason this is this is happening. So I'm just going to sand that down a little bit. Just to, to see what's what. And unfortunately that seems to have flattened down, but we know it hasn't. So what I do is I take a piece of paper towel. And I know the area that's lifted. And I'm going to just soak some zap into that. And then rub it down with the paper towel. There's another area just there, I can see. And rub that down with the paper towel. The paper towel is just to stop myself uh, sticking to the, to the surface, which happens all the time. And there we go, that's, that's down there. I could get the iron out again and try and reaffix it with the iron, but it's clearly not sticking down very well with the iron. So, um, so this is probably the easier way. That's a very slight area of pronounced rib tape, but I'm going to attack it anyway. The Solotex rib tapes really didn't want to stick to this Seconite, that's for sure. So what we do now is we go over the whole model sanding it, and as we go along we either circle an area that's lifted with a pencil, which I might do, or you actually address it right then and there. So um, we'll see how it goes.
one of the other important things to this layer of um, uh, primer filler and sanding does is it takes the edge off the pink tapes. The pink tapes, if you feel them where they're not sanded, are actually really scratchy, really rough and really coarse. If you spray over the top of that, your pink tapes will look awful. They'll look too pronounced, much too harsh. So, sand the edges. You think you're actually taking them away, but you're not. You're making it uh, a lot more subtle, which is a much better finish. You'll see once we put the silver on. So, once the whole model has been sanded down and the grey primer is uh, it's all sanded away, um, I can now sort of attend to the final surface details that need to be put on before the silver can go on. One of the things I had been contemplating for some time was these access zips that you can see here. Now on the full size they are zips and the apex, the two parts of the zip, the zippy bit that slides up and down, is actually wire locked together to stop it coming undone. So on the starboard side you, you have these two Quite, there's a quite a large one at the front and a smaller one above the tailplane on the fin and then on the port side which I won't show you but it's you can trust me it's there there's a, a sort of a V underneath the trailing edge of the tailplane so what I've actually used is size zero zips and they're they're for uh, dolls clothing and things like that so they're very small zips and they're around one sixth scale so the actual combs you know the interlocking parts of the zip are nice and scale for what I need here. Um, the problem is the zip fastenery bit is too big so I've simply cut that bit off and used uh, sections of this zip. So what I've done is I've just run super glue down through the zip to lock it together so it won't zip anymore it'll just be locked. Then I've cut them into sections and I've just literally glued, um, oh, sorry, I've, I've cut the edges off the zip, the fabric that is on the edges of the zip, I've cut it completely away so that it's flush with the edge of the zip. And then I've glued the zip onto the onto the covering of the model. And it's quite effective. I know you probably can't see from the photograph, but it's, you know, it's a, it's a noticeable ridge, exactly as it should be. Really, I need to try and fashion some, some little... Uh, uh, sections at the top, the little pull things, but uh, that may be a bridge too far at this scale. I don't know. Well, I'll think about it. So that's kind of it now. I'm ready to um, to spray silver.
Well that got a little more fraught than it usually does. Uh, I had a lot of trouble with the silver. Now class coat silver is usually a, an absolute joy to, to, to use. Um, it's usually one part uh, catalyst, one part silver and one part thinners. Uh, but it came out way too thick. Uh, I don't know whether it was because it was the bottom of the silver tin and maybe it was just naturally thicker where it hadn't been stirred throughout the uh, its usage. So anyway, uh, I had a lot of trouble um, and eventually I thinned it another 30% uh, and then the, the airbrush worked a treat. So a bit strange. I did use the Iwata this time because it gives a much smoother uh, spread and, and spray pattern. I turned it up to 30 psi just so that I could get the coverage uh, and as you can see we now have a silver Oster Autocrat. So it's it's almost touch dry already it doesn't it doesn't take long it flashes off within 10 or 15 minutes. So um, I did the underside of the wings but I tried using that brush I used that uh, spray gun that middle panel gun and it didn't go very well. It put too much paint on and it was a bit blotchy. So there's the reason that you use good expensive spray equipment because the coverage is even and consistent and controllable. So if you use the cheaper guns, that's what you're going to get. So leave the cheaper guns for spraying filler, primer filler, that sort of thing. So what I'll have to do tomorrow is I'll do the other side of the wings, the top surface. I obviously started on the underside just to just in case it all went pear shaped. So I'll do the top side. Um, and then let that flash off and then I may revisit the underside of the wings and put another coat on with a little bit more consistent spray. As you know silver when you spray it if you if you let let the gun settle on it and the paint go a little bit too thick in areas it looks very blotchy so you've got to be very careful with silver. Okay so that's probably going to be all we're going to cover this time so um, if you've enjoyed it click subscribe and like um, and I'll see you next time.